Welcome along to Donington Park for the penultimate round of racing for the LMP3 Cup Championship. The Championship returns to the Leicestershire track to take on the full Grand Prix circuit in a configuration that will let the LMP3 cars really stretch their legs. The organisers at Butte Motorsport have been busy over the break and introduced a new invitational class for CN cars to complement the existing PT4 class for the likes of the Ligier JSP4 and the Radical RXC. Now let's look at how the championship stands coming into this weekend. Well, it's the Nielsen Racing pairing of Colin Noble and Tony Wells that lead the championship with Bradley Smith and Duncan Williams from Mectec Motorsport in second place. Just 10 points off them though is the Red River Sport pairing of Bonamy Grimes and Johnny Molan. Fourth in the championship is Jack Butel and Dominic Paul for Speedworks Motorsport with Christian Olsen also for Nielsen. He's there in fifth place with Jamie Spence and Jason Rishover completing the top five. Now let's hear from the drivers as we caught up with them after qualifying. It was interesting because I didn't know what the weather was doing. Oh, none of us did. And um, it turned out to be a, a little moment where it wasn't actually, you know, too much precipitation, as they say. So I just went out and got stuck in. 10 minutes is not a long time. It goes faster than you would imagine. Yeah, I got down and it was red and I thought, has it not actually started? And then it went green pretty quick and I was lucky that I could have some space. So it was better there uh, this morning because it was wet the other day. All the balance was gone and I really, had, I was really worried. It was, it was awful. But we worked out what was wrong and we've put it all back to what it should be. And it was good today, just there, brilliant. It should be good for the race. If it's dry, if it's wet, well, we've got a wet setup. So. And just tell us, how, performance-wise, how did the, your car compare to the, the LMP3s and what can we look forward to in the race? I think you know, the CN cars, um, obviously, are kind of not old hat, but they've kind of been slightly ousted by the, you know, the big cars now. But they're still a, an exciting package to watch. And they're open top, obviously, so the aero's not quite as good. It's certainly not as efficient. Um, so they're just a little terrier nipping at the heels of the big dogs. Uh, qualifying was okay, but I was a bit disappointed with P3. I think sectors one and two were, were fine, but it was sector three where I lost the time. So I think we were all pretty close, but I was a bit disappointed. Would have I got I was on pole at Snetterton, so it would have been good to get pole again. But this is what it is today. Oh, we'll just see how the race goes out. We'll obviously, we'll go out on wet tyres and um, see, see how it goes. Yeah, it was a bit of a shame. The car was really good. There was, um, uh, we obviously got, I mean, I followed Duncan out. I mean, I'm sure he'll describe the spins he had. I mean, it was at least three, well, it looked like three times. Anyway, it was a lot. Um, and the car felt immediately better. We'd made some changes um, between FP1 and, and, uh, and Quali. And um, unfortunately, then there was this red flag. And I got stuck behind the guy, I think, who caused the red flag. And obviously, he would, you know, whatever had happened, he made him go slow in. Um, and I lost all the tyre temperature at the front, so came immediately green. And um, it w the, the car was nice, but it just was a little understeery. And uh, I, it was coming more towards the end, but I, I couldn't quite get the front end to, uh, to, to, to take a grip on the exit of Redgate. And, and I made a small error through Old Hairpin on the last lap. So, you know, it, it was probably uh, the car had pole in it, but uh, um, I didn't quite hook up the last lap. But I think if you go with the wrong. If you go with a cautious behaviour, then that can uh, that can be worse. So we'll just treat it as normal, um, and uh, we'll go for the win. Um, yeah, it was getting quicker and quicker out there. So uh, the last lap, they told me I'd only got one left, and you just didn't let, let, leave anything on, on on the table. It was a little bit interesting going out with the, with the rain starting to fall. Was it going to be uh, slicks or, or what? So just tell us about the opening few laps. Yeah, well, the first lap, I thought I got lots of grip until the old hairpin when I did a 360. And uh, you then realise that it was slipper than, than, than you thought. But you can then build your confidence up. It's only half a dozen laps, but still enough time. So just a case of chipping away and putting in that lap, yeah? Absolutely. And then on the last lap, you've got a time. And if you happen to slide off, which I did earlier in the year at Donington, then... Um, You've still got a lap here. As the 
cars line up on a wet grid. It's the Norma of Duncan Williams that takes up pole position. He gets a great start as the lights go out and leads the pack up towards the first corner. The right-hander at Redgate Corner. So Duncan Williams leads Tony Wells and Dominic Paul at the wheel of the Speedworks Ligier as they slither their way around the circuit. Exiting for Cleans Corner, Wells runs wide onto the slippery curbing. That might give Dominic Paul the opportunity to sneak up the inside as they head in towards Coppice. Yep, Paul is through. Dominic Paul now has his sights set on the lead and begins to close in on the Norma by the look of things. Sadly for Richard Ferns, the Radical RXC gets crossed up and takes a trip into the gravel, but he is able to recover. Going on board with Duncan Williams, we can see that Paul is making a move and takes the lead in towards the Melbourne hairpin. end cars of Neil Primrose and Daniel Gibson are having a great battle and are a superb addition to the championship this weekend. As the pit stop window opens, Richard Burns dives to the pits to serve its mandatory pit stop. Well, back out on track, Colin Noble is now aboard the Acoria Cost Car and challenging for the lead. He's locked up, takes a trip through the gravel trap down at the Melbourne hairpin. He's able to recover and is back on the circuit pretty much immediately, however. And that's going to allow him now to focus his efforts and close back down the gap once more. Look, he's on his side by the look of things. The safety car deployed, so the Gibson could be recovered after spinning off down at the old hairpin. It's not long before racing resumes, but as Jack Butel looks to try and catch the leading pair, he makes a small mistake up at McLean's corner, rotates the car through 180 degrees and beaches it into the gravel trap. That is going to bring about red flags. means it's another win at Donington Park for the Met Tech Norma with Tony Wells and Colin Noble taking second position. Happy looking drivers making their way onto the podium at Donington Park after the first race of the weekend. Confirmation of the results then as Duncan Williams and Bradley Smith take the victory from Tony Wells and Colin Noble. Neil Primrose makes his debut podium in third place after the retirement of Jack Butel, with Richard Fern securing fourth position. It's a shame not to see the Gibson finish on its impressive debut. However, let's hear now from the podium visitors. Yeah, I mean, that's it's just unlucky for the guys that have gone off, you know. It, it's a very tricky circuit here when it's wet. It's great when it's full wet, but as it gets greasier it just changes you know you've just got to use your head and it's you know but when you're in the car sometimes that's difficult so it's unlucky for them guys but I've really enjoyed the weekend so far and quality was mega there's a lot more to come you know it's all about me driving better and um, if we get a dry day tomorrow which hopefully will be game on oh, but I've still got improvement to make and um, I, you know I'm my own worst critic and um, you know but if I wasn't like that then you know you've got to be the Norma is a great chassis for these guys as well, and you know, um, aye, to be a second or so off in quality is good. Could be better though. <laughs> Yeah, probably we would have preferred it dry. Um, it, it, I mean, I, obviously, I missed Paul by a, by a tenth, and uh, that meant I had to be cautious not to get the jump start at, at the beginning. So I, I reacted to Duncan rather than the lights, and therefore, uh, you know, I followed him into the turn one. And then um, I, 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 uh, I tried third gear in McLean's on the second or third lap, and uh, and that sort of pushed me wide, and I lost. Uh, I lost the place to uh, to Dom, and, and that was it really. So I just followed them round for for the rest of the race. It's just very unfortunate when the red came out. Actually, I was alongside him in the middle of passing him, and uh, it's going into Hollywood. So it's nearly a done move. And uh, yeah, the saw the red light, lights just as I did that. So yeah, pretty frustrating. But it's good to be at a good enough pace for the for the win. You know, we're still I don't know 30 odd points in the lead. So uh, if we keep scoring seconds, then that's enough. So, but you know, we will have to have a go for a win tomorrow. Yeah, the, the start, the first few laps were, were, were great. The car was very consistent and you could push really hard. 
and, and I, I can see the cars you know, a second or so behind. Then you try to pace yourself to make sure that you can uh, not overdo it, and then it began to get slippier, the tyres got hot, and uh, it, uh, it was tricky. Yeah, the, the car's quite a bit different. Yeah, we, we've learnt a lot. We didn't get the testing early in the year, and uh, we, we've tested, so you know, hopefully good for tomorrow as well. Yeah, I mean, it was a brilliant scrap, wasn't it? Um, yeah, I just struggled with the rears overheating as, as the track got drier. Um, you know, on the restart, I had the chance to cool the tyres down and it was a lot better. But, um, yeah, I mean, I had to defend for, for everything I had then. I think we could have held him off. Um, you know, he'd, he'd been stuck there for a while. Um, but, yeah, the car was getting harder and harder to drive. But, you know, the team have done a fantastic job and, you know, the testing's definitely helped. Um, so we're just hoping for a dry race tomorrow. Victory for Bradley and Duncan means they close the gap on championship leaders Noble and Wells by seven points. And as the race demonstrated with unpredictable weather, one mistake is all it takes to turn things on their head. Join us for more in part two. to Donington Park for part two of the LMP3 Cup Championship. We've seen some great racing and action already so far, and the cars have already been out for qualifying for round 10 of the 2018 championship season. So let's catch up with the top drivers and see how they got on. Okay, but I walked the track this morning and uh, it's quite evident that it was going to take a wee while to dry out, first of all. And I don't think it's rubbered in yet, but it should be now. So this afternoon's going to be mega. But I got an okay time. I wasn't I wasn't particularly happy with it, but it was a good lap, good enough. It's going to be a good battle with the guys still running. Um, I think it'll be good for us. Um, I'm doing the whole drive myself, obviously, so consistency wise for me I just want to get down to a decent lap time and just keep banging it in for the whole hour and that'll be it. Yeah the trick is to try and keep that consistency I mean a couple of the guys have gone off a few times but understandable with the conditions but hopefully today everyone gets into a good rhythm we just still keep circulating and yeah maybe a bit of strategy who knows. Yeah, I made a little mistake trying a different line, spun the car and then we lost temperature in the tyres, so it was a bit of a struggle then to get uh, get a decent time in. But we, we were quickest in the first and second sectors and then lost out massively to Tony, who is incredibly good in the last sector. The norm is very quick round here, it's a, a circuit you guys like I know and you've obviously won here not only yesterday but in the first, uh, first race here as well, so what's your hopes for the race? Well, yeah, if, if, if I can be somewhere near Tony, a changeover, and then uh, Bradley and Colin can have another battle together. Should be a good race, then. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I must admit, when I left the hotel this morning, it was still rainy. I was like, oh, no. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, track's nice. Um, we made some very small adjustments to the car. The car was really good yesterday anyway, so, uh, and uh, I was making uh, some small uh, errors in line uh, through old hairpin and stuff, so corrected those and the uh, car was nailed and, um, and I managed to put a, a, a nice lap together, a second last lap, um, and that was pole, so, um, but, you know, it, it was a neat lap. Uh, the next lap might have been a bit quicker, I think I was I, uh, I got into the 18s in sector one, but I uh, started to catch that um, uh, the white uh, RXC Spider, and it sort of put me off a bit. So, uh, so the, set, the last lap wasn't quite there, but I was I was pretty cheap, pretty pleased with the 26.4. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be dry. Uh, weather forecast looks good. So, uh, uh, Paul's obviously a, a big advantage. You know, you don't have to think about reacting to the other person. You can just wait for the lights and nail it. So, uh, so fingers crossed, I can. Uh, hold the lead and uh, get me head down. And do you think the fight's going to come from the normal again? Um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're quick around here, obviously. Um, 
I think Dom was unlucky. I think his his foot slipped off the pedal, and that you know that sounds ridiculous, but I, it's happened to me at Portimao. hours. So uh, um, hopefully they can get the car repaired as well, and uh, it'll be a good fight between the three of us. After a heavy crash in qualifying, the Speedworks team were able to repair the number 96. And after a superhuman effort by the mechanics and a trip to Corby to collect spare parts, the car is ready to take part in the race. As the cars blast across the line, it's pole winner Wells who holds on to the lead as they head in towards the first corner. People on board with Richard Burns as the cars jostle for position in front. Dominic Paul is clearly fired up and wants to take the lead from Wells. He makes a move at the Melbourne Loop, a favourite passing position for him, and takes the lead. Stretches away from the Acoria Cost car as he builds an early lead. Going on board with Tony Wells, we can see Dominic lock up at the final turn as he gets all tangled up, allowing Tony to retake the lead of the race. Dominic gathers it up and starts to close in on Tony Wells for the lead once more. As the pit window opens, Colin Noble stands ready to take over the leading Ligier from Wells, but Dominic Paul has locked up and hit the tyre barrier, entering the pits. So the pit stop taking place as Tony Wells dives out of the car. That now means that the Norman of Duncan Williams takes over second place in the race. Richard Burns pits, we can see the marshals on the left-hand side there trying to release the Ligier from the tyres on the entrance to the pit lane. Doesn't seem to be troubling Colin Noble, however, as he leads the race and presses on. Neil Primrose and Bradley Smith are enjoying their battle as the nimble CN car puts up a good little fight, actually. Colin Novell, however, only has to pace himself to bring the Acoria Cost entered car home and take the chequered flag for victory. It's another podium for Neil Primrose as well as he sweeps across the start finish line. Here's how it ends then Tony Wells and Colin Noble redressing the balance to beat Duncan Williams and Bradley Smith. It's P3 for Neil Primrose and Richard Ferns taking PT4 honours with his radical. Let's hear from the drivers. Um, I was not in a problem throughout the whole race. I don't know if you saw, I had a few spins in the first half. And what was going on was uh, the fuel pressure switch kept cutting the engine, uh, which is fun when you're going around the corner and suddenly you lose power steering halfway around the corner. And it just spun me around. So I, I think I spun four times in the first half of the race. Second half, I decided to try and keep off the kerbs because I thought it was that that was causing the the, pro the problem. So um, I only had it happen once in the second half, but yeah, that was what was that was what was going on. I was nursing a nursing a problem. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, it was good. Um, great today with the weather. Uh, kind of asked for better. Uh, the track was a little bit, you know, slightly off at the beginning, but then it came in really well. And car was magic, thanks to Tim, and Sam, Joe, and Emerson. Tim Gray, great weekend, great organisation. I had a great day today, and nice to get a dry race rather than a, a squidgy one. It was nice to keep that gap as long as I could for, you know, with Bradley, but, you know, you're never going to keep Bradley behind you for long. And these cars that get 200 horsepower more. All I can do is hammer the corners as hard as I can, but as soon as you're on the straight, you think you're going quick, but you're, you are, but not not V8 quick. <laughs> it's all relative, I guess, but you were, you were having a good good scrap with him and, and not holding him up, but just enjoying the battle. Yeah, just maintaining the gap, and the tyres went a wee bit, so I had a breather, let him through, and then got back on it. And then before you know it, it was, it was over. It was quite a quick hour, to be honest. It's nice doing it all on your own. I enjoyed it. Yeah, tough race. Um, 
to begin with the other cars just had that edge and they they drove away and I was just trying to keep a sensible distance for Bradley to have a go but I had a spin and uh, that uh, didn't help things. The spin allowed uh, Dominic to, to get past and, and make his move but you've got to be in it to win it and it was just about keeping it on on the road and bringing it in for the pit stop I guess. That's right yeah it wasn't easy today you know Bradley will tell you a few more of the issues we've had but that's road to racing. And Bradley, you picked up from the pit stop and brought it home in the second half of the race. Yeah, that's it, exactly. Um, we were trying to nurse a little power, power steering issue towards the end, so yeah, just settled into a bit of a rhythm. Um, obviously, there was, a, there was a big gap to the car in front, so um, yeah, just put some nice clean laps in and uh, big thanks to the team. You know, they've done a, done a good job all weekend. Tony was telling us about the technical issues they had, but by the sounds of it, you had your own issues, so you weren't quite able to narrow that gap enough. Yeah, that's it. I mean, it was getting worse and worse. So especially in the chicane, it was getting really tricky. Um, but, you know, Tim put a fantastic effort in and uh, hopefully we can get uh, another good result at Silverstone. Yeah, well, I mean, it was obviously a lot easier from pole this time. So um, I got a good reaction to the lights. I mean, to be fair, Duncan was quite quick as well. So, but I, I got a good break into turn one and uh, uh, started to gap people um, and and just really kept pulling away and then I uh, saw Dom got into second and then I sort of pushed harder and it seemed like I could uh, match his pace and then coming into coppice on one lap we got this uh, I got this massive thump in the back of the car where I, mean, I thought he'd hit me actually it was we got some gearbox problem so um, so it was like pushing us on a, and it, it, we, we managed to sort of drive around it a little bit but when he when he got me into Melbourne Hairpin, I, I got pushed on at the at the chicane with the gearbox problem, and so I, I give it up. But uh, other than that, so it was just really managing the pace to the uh, to the mechanical issue, and uh, they did a bit of a reset at the at the stops, but I think Cole still had it, so uh, so we had to be a bit careful. But uh, but obviously, um, I guess coming into the pit stop, well, I mean it was all happening behind me. I I just was you know braked at the line and put the speed limiter on, so. But, uh, but other than that, it was a pretty uneventful race. Car was car was good otherwise, and uh, and you know it was nice to win. Yeah. So I I was, I, I was watching uh, you know watching before the lap came in on timing screens for a second. Tony was just keeping the gap with the issue we had, and uh, next thing I'm out waiting for the car to come in and we come in first. So it's a nice surprise, and uh, yeah, we had I think 30 second lead, so I just had to maintain it, and yeah, we had a bit of an issue, so it was just a matter of uh, trying to bring it to the end. So here's how the championship looks ahead of the final weekend of racing, with Colin Noble and Tony Wells having one hand on the championship trophy and the Mectech run car in second place of Bradley Smith and Duncan Williams. It's Bonamy Grimes and Johnny Bolham in third, and Jack Butel and Dominic Paul in fourth. Join us next time from Silverstone, where the LMP3 Cup champions for 2018 will be crowned.